But the Trump bump doesn't extend to the US dollar, which is seeing its longest slide in six years and perhaps could actually be contributing to the bump. bump. Here to break it all down now is Mark Chandler, Brown Brothers Harriman Global Head of Currency Strategy. Mark, first let me ask you about what the President just said in the Cabinet meeting a few moments ago about GDP data coming in at 2.6% for the quarter, first reading albeit, you know, no one ever thought we'd see that for a long time. Is what he's saying about the stock market, about GDP data, is he partially responsible? I'd say it's true. He is describing the state of the economy, and we did have a pickup in Q2 GDP. We do have a relatively strong labor market. I'm just not sure how much of it is due to what's happened in the last six months versus the seeds that were planted a while back. I do see that even though the stock market is doing well and the bond market has done very well, that is, yields are lower than many people would have expected. The dollar, as you point out, has really suffered here. It's uh, seven months in a row, really, on a broad trade weighted basis, something that you know, at the end of last year, the dollar rallied seven out of the last eight months on this broad trade weighted basis, and now the dollar is down seven months in a row. Uh, so it does look like the dollar's fate has turned. And in fact, we're going to illustrate that as we do with the chart. 69.73 in the chart library mark shows, as you can see on the monitor, the dollar obviously down to 93.33 right now, while the stock market keeps rising. I mean, partially one is because of the other, but do you see this trend continuing? Well, I think it's a clearly a question of the stock market can continue to go up. It seems to me no matter what set of economic conditions, stock market goes up, partly I'd say because interest rates are low enough. You know, the S&P yield is almost 2 percent. And all you get on a 10-year U.S. government bond is almost, say, 2.3 percent. So I think on a relative basis, stocks look better than bonds. But on the other hand, this decoupling of the dollar from stocks, I think is the reason the stocks are rallying is not just because the dollar is going down, but the dollar is going down because interest rates aren't there, which is helping the stock market. Mm. Mark, the flip side of the dollar is the euro at or near highest level since January 2015. Is there a level or is it the pace of the move that could make for uncomfortable reading for President Mario Draghi? I think that's an important point. Is I don't think there's a level that the dollar goes down to that is problematic for the Federal Reserve. A lower dollar is going to boost inflation down the road if past patterns hold. But I think you're right that the that it's not just a dollar weakness, but it's the euro strength. And the euro strength here, I think, has not become a concern yet. In fact, at the recent ECB meeting, Draghi, what Draghi said about the currency was basically, we're watching it. It was not a very strong protest, and that gave the market the, the, uh, the green light to buy more. I think we're headed towards 120, but I'm not convinced that the long-term dollar, dollar rally is over. I think this is a long-term correction. It's gone a little bit further than I thought, but it hasn't really gone much farther than technicians would suggest would be a normal retracement after that huge move since the middle of 2014.